order of the sign up cards uh, if you want to speak tonight they are available so please um, make them available to yourself so let's stand and open with the pledge I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all Thank you everyone for coming. Um, before we go into council reports, I'm just going to go through a couple uh, agenda items that have got moved or on the docket in the future that people might be interested in. One, we had an agenda item, uh, the, the last regular meeting about the Mason, Carby, Mason County garbage contract amendment. And we moved that to the meeting on the 19th. That'll be an action item on the 19th. We also have uh, the city council protocol manual coming up that will be discussed on the 19th. And that's important because we've had a question on maybe changing the meeting time. And we've also had discussions about maybe uh, doing something different with public input, the meeting format. And that will be addressed at those meetings when we discuss that protocol manual because that's in there. So the 19th and then the following meeting would be when that would be decided. So the public might um, be interested in that. Don't look at the protocol manual, just think it's all um, really dry because it will affect, define where the public meeting times are and our general format for, for order of business and public comment. So I just want to give everyone one's a head up on that. Um, so we'll go to council reports. Uh, Mason County Historical Society has a quarterly report. Hi, my name is Kristen Fabry. I'm the director of Mason County Historical Society. I know some of you, and there's some new faces to me. Um, so I just want to go over a little bit about our numbers for this past quarter and what's been going on at the museum. Um, Mason County would like to thank the city of Shelton for their continued support, and we're excited to work with the new council in our future endeavors. We've had a busy start to 2018 at MCHS, which marks 60 years as an organization and 27 years for our current museum location. Things are continuing to progress and change at the Historical Society, and we have several new programs and updates this first quarter. In January, we had Jean Springer come and speak at the museum about riding the trains at the narrow gauge circle of Colorado. Jean's program was a success and had about 30 in attendance. Uh, we're also much honored to receive a $1,000 grant from Skookum Rotary Club to go towards our new shellfish display at the museum. Uh, the display is still in progress, but will include historical photos of recreational, commer recreational and commercial shellfishing in the Mason County area, a copy of the patent for the Sandpiper Razor Clam Gun invented by Shelton native Jim Batstone, samples of different shellfish found in the area, and Oyster Fest memorabilia. Uh, we hope to have that up by the time Oyster Fest rolls around. We will be rotating many items through this display and are excited to show how the industry has shaped Mason County area. Our staff has also created two new displays with information about local photographers Bob and Ira Spring and local author Archie Benz. In February, we had former MCHS director Billy Howard come and speak about the history of PEO, the Philanthropic Educational Organization, which is the oldest women's philanthropic group in Mason County. Uh, the program was standing room only, and we had about 35 in attendance. Um, in March, the museum hosted a Humanities of Washington Speakers Bureau event, where local author and cultural anthropologist Linda Dannon gave a program on what it means to be human, what we know about our ancient pre predecessors. The event had over 40 in attendance. In March, MCHS also received two separate grants. The first of two was a county heritage grant, which provided funding to have part of our archive scanned in and added to archiveinabox.com. Um, archive in a Box, located in Shelton, is a platform for the creators of, from the creators of small town papers where you can currently search Mason County Journal archives online. So it will house the museum archives online as well. The new platform will allow the public to search for historical articles documents and photographs from our collection online for free. 
The second grant was received from the Skokomish tribe. The $1,500 grant from their charitable fund allowed us to lease a new scanning copier machine and purchase a computer for our museum. This will allow us to quickly scan and add historical archives to our Archive in a Box website and we'll, that will be available in the near future. In March as well, we received a large collection of items from the two great nieces of artist Ori Nobles. Um, during the 1920s, Nobles and his family created Olympus Manor, a successful artist colony located on the shores of Hood Canal in Union, where painters, musicians, writers, sculptors, and dancers gathered to pursue their creative aspirations. Our staff has been hard at work sessioning that collection, and we look forward to having an updated display with many of the items in the near future. We're currently in the process of organizing our archival room. All archives, photographs, and art artifacts are being transferred to acid-free archival boxes and are being labeled and organized by a session number to make the collection more easily accessible and to help with rotation of displays. We also currently have our Forest Festival memorabilia, including all past portraits of Forest Festival queens on display, including the newest one, which was brought over to us by Cooper Studios. Uh, as part of the Forest Festival festivities, um, we, ha we had videos on uh, display at the Museum of Past Forest Festival parades. Um, on Sunday, June 3rd, uh, we hosted a showing of the Ring of Fire film, 1961 film at Shelton Cinemas as part of the Forest Festival festivities. Uh, if you grew up in Shelton, you might know someone who was in the movie. Uh, the movie features the real life spectacular collapse of a 200-foot high wood trestle and train into the Wainuchi River Canyon. The wreckage can still be seen today. Looking forward, on Tuesday, June 19th at 5 p.m., we will be participating in the Alderbrook Golf and Yacht Club History Series in Union by giving a short history of Hood Canal. On June 24th, we'll be having our annual downtown car show from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. This is our largest fundraiser of the year and will include Oldies music, goodie bags, 50 plus trophy categories, a pie and ice cream social, and a huge raffle. Last year we had close to 300 vehicles register for the event, which was great considering it was 90 plus degrees <laughs> weather last year. Our staff and volunteers continue to greet patrons at the museum, aid with research, write historical articles for various publications, compile our newsletter, and continue to develop new historical programs and displays. In the last quarter, we received 524 visitors with 141 from out of town and 29 from out of state. Thank you so much for your continued support. Thank you very much, Kristen. When is the uh, presentation out in Union? It's June 19th. It's a Tuesday. Okay. That was a good report. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda, Interim City Manager Vicki Look is going to talk to us about some various boards and commissions that the council is responsible to be on. Thanks, Vicki. Okay, so you did receive in your packet um, a copy of all the boards and committees that the previous commissioners had on, and as you can see, there, there are quite a few listed there. So uh, we did have a request for a new committee to be created, and they want... Uh, they ask that a, a council member be uh, participate on that board, and that is the Mason County Housing and Behavioral Health Advisory Board. So that brings it to about 20 boards and, and uh, committees that uh, are available for the council members to sit on. So what we would like you to do is take a look through, and then maybe if you could get back to me and let me know if you look at the times and the days that they're available, um, what you could maybe participate on. I know some of the folks here have uh, jobs, and so maybe an evening meeting would be a little uh, better to accommodate their schedules. Anyway, if you could get those back to me, and then we could kind of bring that back and have a discussion at the next meeting, I think that might be kind of helpful helpful to kind of narrow uh, those down and, and uh, let everybody have one or two boards, committees uh, that they sit on. So if there's any discussion that you'd like to have right now, I mean, I think that would uh, be appropriate too, but we do plan to bring it back when we start to talk about the protocol uh, manual at the end of this month. The only question we, a couple of us mentioned was meetings that are coming up before we decide. So um, 
do you know of those and some of the dates and times where you were correcting so we'll get those back to you Vicki um, I think the EDC is coming up and I think Eric, we need a new board member for that committee I think Eric I'm going to fill in Thursday okay also the the left board is the first Tuesday of the month instead of the third and if you're looking at the EDC and chamber they're actually co-hosting their luncheon this month it's June 15th I had a question on um, Kathy Haig. Uh, I talked to her on Mason County Housing. Is, is this it now a joint? Is is that the Mason County Housing uh, Commission, or is that a separate? The last item that was added is that a separate group? Do you know that? I don't know the one that Kathy is uh, participating on, but this did come um, from Mason County. Uh, Todd Parker brought this in, and he had a uh, resolution that they passed creating the board. And so they did ask for participation. I do have a letter and the resolution from that okay. that I can put in the packet for next week. Or I for the next, the 19th, I guess. If I remember week. right, that was her, her, that Mason County Housing Commission that she was on was the first Thursday and I was gonna potentially sit in on that. So I will do that. Okay. And I will de determine whether that's the same board or okay. different board. And then okay. Vicki, also um, Mason Matters is there's not a city person that represents that anymore on there. Okay. So that's kind of off. And uh, the season, the Shelton area regional water and sewage, sewer plan, um, I, that hasn't been a city person on that either. Okay. So that one's off. And I may be wrong about that, but there's never been a... a well, maybe we'll reach out to the contacts on that then and make sure that... Yeah, and also the Mental Health and Substance Abuse Advisory Board and Community Lifeline, there hasn't been anything on there, or a city rep on those two. The so. community. community Lifeline okay. and the Mental Health and Substance Abuse Advisory Board. So Vicki, will you clarify whether that's just lack of participation or <laughs> they <laughs> just don't want a city participant? Yeah. Okay. And I'll be, I'll be sitting in on the MACECOM board meeting next Tuesday. Okay. okay. Thanks, Joe. You're welcome. Any other discussion at this point? Okay. So we'll get back to Vicki and thank you. That's good. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, council reports. We'll start with <coughs> Councilman Dorsey, please. All right. Well, most of you know we had a parade on Saturday and I thought that the, I was going to ask all these people, I thought that the council members in the truck were well received. Did you? Okay. I, I thought it was well received. Uh, people were clapping and cheering and, and I thought it was great. Um, also that evening I went out to the Battle of the Bands at the Ridge for the, for the Martha Reed Foundation and um, that was as a citizen by the way. And that was fun. Um, six, uh, June 7 and June 14th, I have a staff brief briefing with Vicki and or Bob at the Civic Center. And I think we're 1 o'clock now, Vicki. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And then on 612, I have the Mason Transit Authority Board at 4 o'clock at the Transit Center. And that's all I have right now. Commissioner Nisco. Well, I attended all of the fun festivities this weekend at the parade and the carnival and pretty fun. Um, I have a briefing on Thursday. I'm going to fill in at the EDC ribbon cutting, the chamber ribbon cutting on the 8th, Friday. The 12th, I believe we have a ribbon cutting also. And budget meeting was canceled for the 12th, correct? correct. And we have a chamber after hours on the 13th and a lunch on the 15th and I'll attend the blues and brews on the 16th and then on the 19th we have an all-day training on uh, Robert School of Orders. Correct? Thank you. Hello. Yeah, I'll also, be, yeah, I'll also be attending all of the, um, the study sessions that the the new council is going to be going over over the next two or three weeks 
and uh, uh, also staff briefings. Uh, my, I've cut back on some of my other uh, committee um, meetings, and I have a few here, and we will be coming forward with who all is going to serve on which boards and committees. And so uh, that concludes my report. Thank you, sir. Um, my report starts with Forest Festival, and I appreciate uh, Public Works and Parks for helping uh, get us all in the truck. It was a great day, so I think we all appreciate all the work that was completed. Uh, this week we have a briefing on 6-7. Uh, a lot of that time is going to be tied to the 18 uh, budget. Um, we also have the parliamentary training on the 19th, uh, attending, I, I assume, probably the same ribbon cutting as, as some of us at uh, Hilburn Trail, uh, which is joint between uh, Capital Land Trust and Choice, I think, is working on that. And then um, we'll probably uh, attend the whatever the Mason County housing, uh, if that's still on Thursday, um, and see if that's see how that goes and if that's combined with the other group. So, okay. Commissioner Peterson. Thank you. So, in addition to Forest Festival and last week's briefing, um, there are a number of um, events coming up. Eric mentioned most of them that. I sit in through my work at the chamber. There's a ribbon cutting this Friday, um, the Hilburn Trail ribbon cutting, which all of the council members were invited to. Um, chambers after hours and luncheon are coming up the following week on the 13th and 15th, respectively. We have our Jurassic Parliament training on the 19th and um, Association of Washington Cities in Yakima at the end of this month. Council um, member McDowell, please. <laughs> Um, I attended my left board meeting this morning. Um, I have briefing with Vicki and Bob and Kevin, I believe, and Gary on Thursday. Um, ribbon cutting for the Derma Sweet Skin Care. Um, I have a meeting with an constituent. I will not be able to attend the Capital Land Trust, um, the cutting for the Hilburn Trail. After hours, I have a Lions Club meeting uh, on the 13th, 14th, briefing again, and then I'm going to be involved, getting involved with the veterans on the uh, banners that will be hung, the Blue Star. Um, well, anyway, the, the, pers the young man or young woman that has been deployed will be a Blue Star, and they will get honored by having a star put on a banner on the new lights up um, Alder Street. So I will be working on that project with the veterans and Jurassic Park parlim parliamentary training on the 19th. And that's my couple weeks. Council yeah. Member Schmidt. Uh, good evening. Last Friday uh, evening met with uh, Commissioner Drexler regarding the evaluation and training uh, treatment center. Uh, Saturday attended um, the Forest Festival Parade and thanks to Donnie, Mike and Jared for safely getting us in and out of a dump truck and uh, that was a that was a good good time um, council budget workshop this evening or this Thursday evening coming up from five to seven um, next Tuesday I will be attending the Mazecom board meeting now at uh, 1500 and also this week on Wednesday I'll be attending the uh, ribbon cutting for the uh, Hilburn trail as well okay thanks all clarification on one meeting he was talking about did you have a request from three of the council members to come in and uh, have a short budget update and uh, we will be sharing that information along with the rest of the council members during our briefings on Thursday as well. Okay, so that's not a seven person meeting. No, it is not. It's Bob, Deidre, and Joe. Cool. Okay, thank you. Thanks for clarifying that. Um, public comment is next on the agenda. This is for general comments. I invite the uh, Members of the public to comment and submit comments to the city clerk's office. In, okay, <laughs> Vicki, in the next couple of weeks, if you want to submit written comments. So, okay. Vicki, who um, do we have up? Thank you, city council members, and thank you, Vicki, for inviting me up. Uh, I do have a general comment, but it's rather specific about, uh, first of all, thanking the, uh, the newly appointed commission for 
entertaining and considering a proposal to lease space, approximately 11 acres at Wallace Nealon Boulevard and Shelton Springs Road. You're aware that in August of 2017, um, it was a pretty historic event in both the YMCA history and the city of Shelton, looking at a partnership to bring a full facility YMCA to Shelton, and the partnership of looking at the surplus land at where I just said at Wallace Nealon and Shelton Springs is a huge, huge deal. So uh, that really elevated the project and it was a massive catalyst in looking at capital support for that project. So four year review and consideration, I have a lease uh, and it's a preliminary lease and I don't know who I'm gonna give this to, you. There. And then also, uh, council members, um, you've already received a briefing packet on the background and history of where this, you know, several decades long project has been in the works only recently and thanks to the vision of the former commission looking forward and providing leadership to say, hey, if, if we're going to build a Y and there really is a need for a YMCA in Shelton, it ought to be built in the city limits and specifically at this specific piece of property. So, thank you. Thank you, Kyle. The next person is Sue Patterson. Honorable council members, I am uh, the District 1 Commissioner for the Port of Shelton, and I just wanted to read a letter that was mailed to the city on May 3rd, before some of you were council members, and I am here to express our support for the why. Dear council, first of all, I would like to extend warm congratulations to each of you on your success in a historic election for the city of Shelton. I also would like to offer congratulations on the site for the Shelton YMCA branch. The YMC slated to be sited on Wallace Neyland Boulevard is definitely the right step in furthering economic development in Shelton and the Mason County community in general. With over 900 employees currently working on port property in over 35 businesses, we know that our tenants locate in areas that have quality schools and a community that is surrounded with amenities where they can raise their families and enjoy quality of life. The YMCA is exactly the sort of resource that attributes to these desires and offers employees and their community a safe and wholesome venue for kids and families. The port surveyed our tenants and the response received was overwhelming in favor of the YMCA causing an economic boon in this area. Business leaders throughout the area understand the impact that the YMCA will have here. The citizens of Mason County have already committed to investing in their community and its youth with the recent passing of our construction bond for the Shelton School District. The YMCA is another positive investment in our youth and families. The fact that the city of Shelton is facilitating this project with a low cost, long term lease of city owned property speaks to the vision of city leaders and your commitment to further growth and development of our economy. The Port of Shelton Commission stands together in support for the YMCA and the City of Shelton's commitment to, commitment to and investment in this critical project. We encourage the City Council to in, continue to move this vital project forward. Sincerely, Dick Taylor, Chairman, Port of Shelton Commission. And I would like to express my own personal support also. Um, I have recently had my grandchildren move into the area and it's exactly the sort of thing that coming from LA they would expect <laughs> to have available in Mason County. So go for it. Thank you, Commissioner Patterson. Could we have a copy of that? Vicki's got it. Mr. Mayor, council people, 
My name is James Thomas. I chair the Economic Development Council of Mason County. And I am here to express the full-throated support of the EDC for this project. It will bring an important uh, facility to the community that will serve the people of Shelton and the surrounding area for decades to come. This is going to be an enduring legacy for this inaugural uh, seven-member council, and I think it, it speaks well of your vision for the community that, uh, that you're pressing forward with this. I would also like to, uh, speaking just as a private citizen, um, note my support for your support for the Tiny Homes for Veterans project that uh, Tom Davis is heading up. This again is another fine uh, program for the city and uh, uh, I, I can't express my gratitude enough for your, uh, your support. Thank you. Thank you, James. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, uh, my name is Sean McGrady. I'm the Executive Director of Ponza, a 501c3 nonprofit. Uh, we built Coyote Village in uh, Olympia, uh, which has uh, become a national model of what's possible, award winning. And I'm here tonight because of one word uh, land. Um, let me explain. Uh, I've been working very closely with veterans advocate Tom Davis and um, uh, with the strong support of Senator Tim Sheldon, we were granted $3 million, let me repeat that, $3 million in the last capital budget to build a tiny house village in Shelton for our veterans in need. This model uh, has the full support of the Department of Veterans Affairs in Washington. Uh, and we need land to build that village. We have submitted, I have a, sub, a formal letter of interest and a proposal uh, with me. Um, and I also want to, uh, before I go on, I want to also thank city staff that has been working with us very graciously to help uh, figure out this challenge of getting land. Um, I would love <laughs> nothing more than to put millions of dollars uh, into this town, construction jobs uh, and more, but more importantly, this is a remarkable opportunity for all of us. Uh, we could absolutely end veterans' homelessness in Shelton and Mason County. Uh, as you know, this is not about politics, but what is morally right. Uh, the men and women who've taken the oath of service, who prom promised they'd die for this country if necessary. Um, it's, you know, we owe them a debt, plain and simple. And here we have this precious, remarkable opportunity to repay that debt. Um, that, that kind of thing doesn't happen too often. So I know you're going to be surplusing land or thinking about it tonight, but I hope you'll be thinking about us if you do that uh, to help us. I thank you all for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. And I have this proposal. I'm not sure where I bring it. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Well, I'd just like to congratulate you on your victory, but now it's time to roll up your sleeves and start cutting taxes. And I'm here uh, on behalf of my tenants about the utility tax from the garbage department. Uh, when they first told me 41.9%, I about fell over. That's got to be one of the highest, if not the highest, in the state. Uh, for some reason, this needs to be trimmed down, and I'm just bringing it to your attention now so you can think about how you're going to trim it down to get it within a working, realistic number. Thank you. Thanks, Evan. <clears throat> Good evening, and congratulations on the new council members. Uh, and the old ones as well, I'm just, uh, and welcome back. Uh, as new council members, you have a responsibility to protect and defend the interests and rights of your constituents. 
Understanding your good evening and congratulations on the new council members uh, and the old ones as well. I'm just, uh, don't be afraid to rock the boat. Be passionate, caring, and really listen to constituents. Don't spend your time courting the bureaucrats like I was. After 40 years as a public servant, I learned way too much through the school of the hard knocks. And here are some axioms that meant a lot to me. When you're wrong, promptly admit it. No excuses or blaming. Remember what you said when you were running for office. Your platform goes with you, and people remember. Trust but verify. Many of the problems the city of Shelton is dealing with today were caused or could have been eliminated by that axiom. Be honest, open, and transparent. If you need to raise taxes or take on a loan, call for the public forum. People want to be heard. Put it on the ballot. Don't bury it in a contract for garbage. Be informed. Recent events have highlighted the need. It's your responsibility as a council member to seek out the truth. Remember, information is power. Getting your information needs met will likely be the biggest challenge that you have as council members. Be diligent here as you can't make good decisions based on faulty or insufficient information. Do your homework. Networking is the key to the kingdom of knowledge. Empower others to help you in your quest. Don't just take the word of your city staff. They are all hardworking, good people, but will often only have a portion of the information you need to make good decisions. Again, trust, but verify. Don't be afraid to request input from your constituents. After all, that's who you're working for. Axiom, the bureaucracy City government, state government, federal government has a vested interest in growing and it will never eat itself. Webster says that the bureaucracy is a system of government in which most of the important decisions are made by government officials. I get to finish my sentence? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Rather than by the elected representatives of the people, you are the representatives. I know you're doing, going to do a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Randy. Hi, everybody. Um, my congratulations as well. I think I've talked to most of you in person. Unfortunately, in the recent presentation by staff, there was a doubling down of the false narrative with respect to the solid waste deal with Mason County garbage. The reason given for the contract change is because of the, quote, unforeseen difficulties of privatization. Not true. We foresaw and pointed out these, quote, difficulties months ago. These difficulties arose out of, as a result of a deliberate and illegal effort by the city bureaucracy to hide what it was doing. What Tom and I are not doing is claim that just because we have looked at this issue for a long time, and we have, that this is unquestionable proof that what we are saying is correct. If anyone disagrees with, with Tom and I without saying specifically what it is you disagree on, giving us the opportunity to respond, then, then making a blanket statement they were wrong is in itself not honest. You may also hear someone say there are two sides to every story. If one person says two and two is four, and the other person says two and two is five, there are no two sides. There are several items wrong with and illegal about the deal, but since you are about to consider changing the contract, for now we will focus on items in the contract that need to be scrutinized. In the recent council meeting, in the original solid waste document presented, the option three staff recommendation page shows items that were changed when the contract was subsequently rushed through and voted in. Item one, that page references an uncapped CPI. Prior to the vote, we were told that a cap of 4.5% was to be added to the contract. 
What we were not told until just before the vote was that the cap goes away after 10 years. Waste Connections, goal, parent company of uh, Mason County Garbage, stated, states in their website, their goal is to establish monopolies in rural communities. They know that it is unlikely that a staff of these small communities has the financial skill set to understand the rate instability caused by an uncapped CPI. Shelton staff certainly has demonstrated that they do not have these skills. Why is there a CPI clause in a contract that already has a clause allowing Mason County Garbage to request a rate adjustment with documentation of expense changes? The city of Sammamish, for example, also has such a clause with no CPI adjustment. Sorry, I've broken glasses. Here's a question you should ask Waste Connections, and if you don't, we will. Please demonstrate how the Seattle, Tacoma, Bremerton Consumer Index is correlated to the cost of haul hauling garbage in the city of Shelton. In relieving itself of operational risk, the city has saddled the ratepayers with significant financial risk. Those issues aside, you may argue that you have no choice to maintain the 41.9% utility tax given the current state of the city's finances, which is FUBAR. Here's the point. In the city's long-term planning, it will be wrong to depend on a continuing solid waste utility tax of 41.9%. Uh, I'm almost said. What? Uh, I have one sentence. Okay, go ahead, Randy. Do, 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 do. Um, for you new council members, this is not only an opportunity to demonstrate that your loyalty belongs to the people that elected you, this is also an opportunity to demonstrate that you are thinkers, that you want to be prepared before you make a vote. And I've talked to some of you new people, you are thinkers. This is your chance to prove it. Thank you. Thanks, Randy. Okay, thank you, Vicki. So we're gonna move on to the consent agenda. Um, are we re ready for the reading of the consent agenda? Yes. Okay. Um, Vicki, please read. Uh, in the amount of $75,862.66. That's it for tonight? Okay, thank you. Um, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as read? I will make the motion to approve the consent agenda as read. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, consent agenda is accepted. Uh, first uh, business item, uh, community development, Mark Ziegler is here to talk to us about the, anticipate, the anticipated proposal from South Sound YMCA. Thank you, Mayor, Council Members. In light of the, um, the lease, draft lease agreement um, provided from uh, South Sound YMCA tonight and the public hearing slated for June 19th in front of um, the Council, um, I'm asking that uh, we place the, um, the review and approval of this lease agreement on the action agenda for June 19th uh, in cooperation with the, uh, the, um, the, excuse me, surplus, the property surplus, um, specifically to um, item nine, number one, nine, subdivision one, uh, parcel number 320007. 3060000 that was in um, your brief at the last meeting and is in your packets tonight. Okay, thanks, Mark. Discussion, comments? Okay. I move to place this item on the action agenda for the June 19th, 2018 council business meeting pending a declaration of surplus of subdivision one of parcel number 3200730. Six zero 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 zero. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Or is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, that, that's passed. Excuse me. Oh. Uh, is it time to go home, Vicky? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, first action agenda item is interim city manager Vicki Look, Fire Chief Tim McKern will present information about the hazard mitigation plan. Chief McKern. Well, good evening. 
Well, hopefully I've kind of chatted with you at least of you, and hopefully we won't have to use anything. As a couple of you said, let's hopefully not use any of this stuff, and I, I agree with that. Um, I will tell you, uh, things are extremely dry out there. Uh, we've had more brush fires in the time of May than we've ever had in a long, long, long time, um, eight of which have already uh, cropped up, several of which have been in the city as well. So hopefully we can get this hazard mitigation, let's get it approved and get it back in the hands of the state where it needs to be, and uh, hopefully we won't have to use those, but certainly be cautious out there. Um, our call volume, I gave you that already. That's in front of you there for the district. Uh, we were at 2282, and then the city's at uh, 1055. I guess there's a good news about it is we're down about 5%, and that's great. That means the citizens are really doing well. Uh, this weekend, of course, we enjoyed Forest Festival. Uh, it was very safe. We appreciate it. We thank the citizens for the safe uh, method that we had. Um, obviously, it gets crazy around the fireworks area up there, and those are always crazy times, but other uh, than that, was a good time. So I'm here to entertain any questions you might have. It's, uh, it's a simple, simple question, but recreational um, backyard fires in a fire pit is that still go? Currently, currently it's okay, but okay. you've got about you got about two weeks here, so uh, ma the main fire ban itself will probably start around July one. Okay. I would anticipate, based on the weather forecast, with uh, they've actually changed from a regular to a, kind of a, a warmer season. I would anticipate the burn ban lasting probably till October one. Any other questions for Chief? I don't have any questions, but I'd just like to thank you, Chief, for incorporating some of the changes that we requested Absolutely. at our initial meeting and appreciate your attention to detail getting this all taken care of for us. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Chief McCurry. Uh, anyone here for public comment, Vicki? No one's here for public comment. Okay. Thank, thank you. Um, ask for, okay, could I have a reading of? Resolution number 11300518. Yes, resolution number 110-0518 is a resolution of the City of Shelton, Washington, adopting the Mason County Multi-Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan. Is there a motion to approve resolution number 11300518? I move to adopt resolution number 11300518, adopting the Mason County Multi-Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Any discussion? In favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Approve resolution number 11300518. Okay, next action item is... Uh, Director Mark Ziegler is going to talk to us about the Civic Center Rotating Art Gallery. Thank Mark. you, Mayor, Council Members. I'm bringing back to you today on the action agenda item the approval of three artists for the Civic Center Rotating Art Gallery. We originally briefed this on May 15th. Uh, the Shelton Arts Commission called for artists and juried the work of these three artists and is recommending a total of nine pieces to be installed in the Rotating Art Gallery from June 6th through August 31st with your approval. And I have copies if anyone's interested. So. The ones we saw before we still right. Mm -hmm. Correct. Same pieces as, um, as reviewed on the 15th. All right. Questions or comments for Mark? Okay. Um, uh, sec excuse me. Do we have a motion? Any public comment? Now? Um, I move to approve the Shelton Arts Commission's recommended artists to be installed in the Shelton Civic Center Rotating Art Gallery June 6th through August 31st, 2018. Second? Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, motion carries. Uh, Public Works Director Gregory is going to share about the garbage service appeals. Uh, changes. Thank you, Mayor, Council Members. As we discussed a couple of weeks ago, uh, the other utilities that we do have have an appeals process, and we are looking to move forward with uh, providing also the same appeal process that all of the other utilities have at this point uh, for solid waste services also. Okay. Um, any, anyone sign up for public comment? Okay. And was there, I, I missed public comment on the art. Was there any? Okay. Thank 
you. Okay. Um, questions or comments from council members? Okay. Um, May we have a second reading and adoption of ordinance number 1922 0518? Certainly. Ordinance number 1922 0518 is an ordinance of the City of Shelton, Washington relating to garbage sanitation service appeals, amending section 8.08.100 of the Shelton Municipal Code. You have a motion to accept the ordinance. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. All those in any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Accept ordinance number 1922 0518. Okay. Next action item is again from uh, Craig Gregory about talking about temporary speed reductions due to all the construction in town. So Thank you again, Mayor and Council Members. This is something that you are hearing for the first time, uh, but we felt the need for a reduced speed through the construction area. We have got an awful lot going on downtown these days, uh, especially on the Olympic Highway North and Alder Street sections of town with Basin 3 uh, construction and also the downtown connector. So we are suggesting to lower the speed limit within that area of the downtown connector project, including First Street uh, from Pine to San Joaquin down to 20 miles an hour. And that is uh, regulated by an RCW, RCW 4661-400 that does allow for the reduction of speed uh, on a city street without a traffic engineer's study. So that is something that we noted and wanted to make sure that you were aware of that we did not need a study of a traffic engineer to make this adjustment for the time period of the project. And there may not be a need for it. We did include that it was the entire uh, duration of the project or until we see a need to not have that uh, anymore so that we could lift that as soon as we see some of that uh, paving done and, and those lanes open back up. Or even maybe we get Basin 3 so they're out of the area and there is less uh, congestion down there. So we can look at that uh, on an ongoing basis and, and make adjustments as needed. But at this point we are suggesting that we lower the speed limit down to 20 miles an hour. Craig, we'll be putting up some kind of uh, temporary signs, I suppose. We will be putting up signs. Uh, also, the tra traffic fines double in work areas also, and also in traffic or in construction zone uh, work also uh, signs at the end of yes. each of the limits of the project. And maybe even those, uh, what do you call that, that reader board you guys put out yeah. sometimes. The LED. We do have the reader boards out uh, in various parts of town okay. right now at both ends of the project and also in other areas that we are uh, promoting our Facebook page where we do give updates to traffic and also our City of Shelton website where we've been posting weekly updates to traffic also. If you were to say see a silver SUV going 40 miles an hour, you have the right to ask my wife to slow down. Okay. <laughs> Most likely Chief Moody will give her a ticket, I'm guessing. But <laughs> oh my God. Vicky, was there any, any public comment on this? No public comment. I just had one comment with this, and uh, just showing my support of the temporary speed reduction, just because um, 800 you know, uh, injuries occur every year in work zones, and the top one of the top three reasons reasons for those injuries is related to excessive speeds. And I think it's just a good idea to do just for the general safety of the traveling public, as well as our um, uh, construction workers and city staff that'll be working in those construction zones. So, thank you. Uh, and I agree with that. I so don't infer anything for this question. So the entire length of the reduced speed will be considered a construction zone for enforcement. Is that? That is correct. Okay, that's So fine. we will post it at C Street at the beginning of the project up on the 
uh, Hill section and also at uh, First Street and also on both ends of First Street entering into the construction zone. So at the end of San Joaquin and also at Pine Street on First. Okay, thanks Greg. For the record, Kevin has a white Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think it's a great idea I think yeah. it's for people's safety. I've seen some crazy things already. Cars stop really fast because they're, they're not looking that there's construction there. I think it's a good idea. And we do have some very narrowed lanes uh, at this point, not only up on the hill section, but also downtown where they have removed saw cut and removed the curb uh, and gutter and have left that an open trench until they actually get the curb and gutter poured back. So uh, we do have some very reduced lane widths also. Is there a possibility that there could be um, some speed signs like halfway between the two ends, the top and the bottom? Because people are going to come out on a side street or whatever and they're going to miss that down. We will be posting multiple signs throughout Great. the project. Thank you. Yes. And I'll, I'll just, this is kind of off the topic, or kind of is the Facebook page. It's, that looks really nice. I mean, good. Uh, I looked at it and it gave me good information. Now, whether you know on that day they might be slightly different due to construction issues, but it was good information, so I appreciate that. We have so. been hounding Andy, our communications uh, director at this point, uh, constantly to get uh, updates out there for us. So I think he's getting a little tired of us already, <laughs> but uh, we'll continue to get those updates out there. But he is doing a great job getting those updated. Okay. Thanks, Greg. You're welcome. Any other comments or questions? Do we have a motion? I move to approve the temporary, temporary reduction of speed on Alder Street from First and Alder to Olympic Highway North and C Street, and on First Street from Pine to San Joaquin Avenue for the duration of the projects or until it's no longer needed. Thanks, Joe. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, one more item from Public Works Director Gregory is amendment to the 2018 fee schedule. Again, something that we talked about a couple of weeks uh, prior to this meeting, there were quite a few amendments that needed to be made, just a house cleaning uh, for the fee schedule. Not only myself, but Mark also, also noticed uh, some of the errors within the fee schedule and we are just asking to update that fee schedule and amend uh, that to reflect the corrections that were uh, intended when we actually passed the fee schedule the first uh, time. Is that wetlands one a, a mistake? <laughs> it was a typo, I yes. Guess so. <laughs> yes, I think yeah. there was another zero added there that yeah. didn't belong. Okay, very good. Any Finished. public comment? Okay, thank you. And it's just these eight items on the first page and not the several pages after. That's correct. You can actually view the entire fee schedule uh, on the city website. It's a fairly lengthy document, so we, we figured we would just list the actual changes instead of the entire red line version uh, for your, your viewing. But if, if you so feel the need, you certainly can go to the website and it is uh, on the website. And Craig, if any residents um, got caught up in the, the interim between the intended fees and, and now making these changes, do we anticipate anyone paid a higher fee that it's going down that we're going to need to address those concerns? If anything, uh, the customers have seen a reduction in what they have paid. Not, nobody, that, to our knowledge, has paid an excess of what the intent of Perfect. this was. Thank you. Okay. So can I have a, a reading of resolution number 1128? Dash zero five one eight. Yes. Resolution number one one two eight dash zero five one eight is a resolution of the city of Shelton superseding resolution one 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 dash one 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 seven. The city fee schedule revising fees. Do we have a motion? We move to adopt resolution one one two eight dash zero five one eight, a resolution amending the fee two thousand eighteen fee schedule. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Resolution adopted 1128-0518. Thank you, Vicki. Um, we're two administrative reports. Yes, thank you. I have uh, 
had a few questions asking about um, the schedule coming up over the summer for especially Bob Jean and myself. And so I just wanted to let you know that I would be bringing something back on the 19th that would be outlining what our uh, plans are for the next couple months. And I'm um, also announcing kind of when we think we'll have a finish to our, our uh, employment here at the city and uh, making some recommendations along those lines. So I'll be briefing that uh, on the 19th. And I believe that Craig also has an update uh, on a couple issues. I do have a fairly lengthy update for you tonight. There are quite a few things going on in public works that we don't necessarily bring uh, to the council uh, for a vote, but just wanted to inform you of what is actually going on out there and a lot for the public also to uh, make sure that they are aware of some projects and some other things that are going on. So some in-house projects that uh, we haven't really made note of uh, to this point. The Jones Road water extension will be a fairly large project for our city staff. They are replacing a fairly large section uh, over 1,200 feet of uh, water main, moving from a six inch asbestos concrete line that is up in that area to a new PVC eight inch line that will increase fire flow and also adding two hydrants up in that area that currently they do not have up in that area. And they are gonna, going to be starting work on June 11th in that area, so you will see some road closures uh, for a fairly long period of time, not expecting that project to be done until sometime in early to mid-July. Uh, so it is a fairly large uh, water main uh, replacement project that is going to be done in-house. It currently is budgeted in the 2018 budget at 60000 uh, and they will be doing uh, new water main replacement and some paving up in that area also. Uh, so you will be seeing that coming forward uh, soon. And also the 20 residential blocks will be going out uh, shortly for bid in the next uh, few weeks. So that will be something that we will be bringing back for a vote after we get uh, those bids back for those 20 residential blocks. And with that being said, uh, some major changes in some areas on those 20 blocks. Wilson Street will really take a different shape. Right now, the encroachment uh, for a lot of landscaping, some trees that uh, need to be removed for alignment purposes. So that is on the south end of town, uh, but Wilson Street will really uh, undergo, over the next couple weeks, a transformation where a lot of the vegetation will be taken out and that roadway will be realigned uh, with some added storm infrastructure also uh, up in that area. So that will be a pretty major change for those folks up there. Uh, we have notified them that it is coming. We haven't heard a lot of uh, negative feedback at this point. I think everybody is happy to that their gravel road is being paved at this point. So they are excited to see that and uh, are, are excited for the change. Can I get that list, Craig? I don't have that list of the 20 blocks? Uh, we can certainly provide that list. Uh, it is online also. Okay. It is on our website. Uh, but if you would like, we certainly can provide it at uh, one of the- I can find the, it there. Okay. Quick, quick question. Jones, Go ahead, Deb. Jones Street and Wilson Street, whereabouts are those? Jones is up in the southeast uh, section of town. Uh, the, the section that's actually being replaced oh. is actually in the county. Yeah. Uh, it is a main line that runs from uh, Arcadia mm -hmm. up to Dickinson Street, which okay. uh, it does serve county residents, but it is uh, a city-owned facility. Okay. So, or infrastructure. Those 20 blocks, are those what were, what were on the original or at least the published lists two or three months ago? Have they correct. changed? They, okay. That is correct. Okay. Yes. And that's all going down for contract? That is correct. Not being done in house, the, 20, the 20 blocks. Correct. That is going out for bid. Um, actually, the bid prices that we have seen, we, we analyzed that uh, somewhat here just a few months ago after getting bids back for uh, Turner Street and some of our other projects. Paving contracts uh, we have found are much lower than we've seen in the past. And at this point, uh, we don't feel that we can do those and provide those services as uh, cost effectively with in-house crews as we can 
uh, with uh, a bid process and actually the quality I think will be much better. We have had crews of uh, senior employees in the past. We are a fairly unexperienced, inexperienced uh, public works department at this point and uh, I think at this point it is probably better to let those uh, employees get their feet wet on some smaller projects instead of a citywide paving uh, project at this point. So we will be going to bid for this year's and we will be uh, uh, analyzing that in the future to see if that is uh, the, really the direction that we want to go in the future. So, so Craig, the, the time that was going to be allotted for that 20 blocks of paving, I assume that's going to go on with ongoing maintenance and other things that crew is going to be working on, is that? Yes, sir. Okay. It will allow us also to get to some of those other things this year that uh, with a street department that is fairly limited in employees, uh, they only have uh, two and a half employees in the street department. So having 10 employees out there paving streets for a couple of weeks uh, certainly would eat up a good portion of what is allotted to the street department over the entire year. So it will allow us to do some more of those maintenance issues, uh, crack sealing and, and some of those other issues that we just can't get to on an ongoing basis. So Thanks. yeah, you're welcome. So with that being said, uh, Holly Drive also a uh, pretty large uh, improvement project up off of the Turner Street project. So we have uh, some infrastructure needs up there. We have done some stormwater improvements and we've also stubbed water lines and sewer lines to any vacant lots up in that area uh, so that we don't run into the no cut ordinance that we do have. Uh, so we have looked at all of our paving projects and we will be stubbing to any vacant lots uh, on any of those 20 residential blocks and any of our other uh, major paving projects that we are undergoing at this point also. Uh, so it is something that the crews, in-house crews are, are dealing with right now and taking care of uh, with storm water and sewer uh, up in those areas. But Holly Drive had quite a few of those and uh, a major storm improvement also. Uh, and then I think everybody knows, I won't touch on the three major projects that we have going out there on out there, but I think everybody has seen how quickly uh, Wanch Construction got started on the Downtown Connector project. Mm -hmm. They have got quite a few crews out there and they are moving fairly quickly uh, through that project. So we're hopeful that that continues uh, with that and, and their success uh, on that project. And then a few of the projects that are upcoming, uh, we do have RFQs out right now for four different projects. Uh, the two roundabouts on Wallace Neelan Boulevard at Spring Road and also at 13th at the four-way stop uh, for 10% design and also 10% design for Access Shelton Phase 1, which is basically the west portion of downtown Shelton, so from 7th Street to the city limits and from Alder Street to Coda Street. So really around Evergreen School uh, and Coda Street from 7th Street out to uh, the city limits and railroad out to the city limits also. Uh, we are looking at a fairly large project. We did have a Safe Routes to Schools grant uh, that we ended up giving back. We just didn't have the design that was done uh, a few years back, but that is what this is for. It's a 10% design. Uh, for a sidewalk and ADA uh, project and also a transportation project also with a repaving of 7th Street uh, and railroad from 7th uh, to the city limits. And 7th Street would be from Alder to uh, Railroad Avenue. And that is something we really started looking at this when we were working with our consultant as far as grants go. Uh, it is a pretty favorable grant uh, for TIB funds. Uh, for the paving portion of that. But one of the requirements is that you have your sidewalks and your ADA ramps uh, taken care of before they actually uh, fund that. It doesn't mean that you actually have to have construction finished. You have to have a design and a potential funding source before you can apply for that. So that is something that we wanted to address uh, and, it, and it is needed. So we are looking at additional grants for Safe Routes to Schools. They have approached us again 
uh, and asked if we would be interested in applying for a grant uh, for that area. And we certainly, working with uh, the Shelton School District, uh, see a need for that project, not only for the pavement, but also for walkability downtown. So that is something that we are moving forward with. Uh, the rehab of well one and the replacement of about a mile of gravity water line. You don't see very many gravel water, gravity water lines uh, anymore. Uh, it is not a pressurized system, so we are looking to pressurize that system from well one to the high school tank. But that is a fairly large project, so uh, we are out for 10% design uh, on that project also. And then to finish up kind of projects that are out uh, being slated for design right now, the reclaimed tank at the satellite wastewater treatment plant, that would be an in-ground uh, holding tank. Right now we've got a 40,000 gallon uh, capacity tank out there that is not able to hold the flows that come in. So basically the Washington State Correction Center has fair, fairly regular flows that come into the plant at specific times. So it, it's really a morning flow that comes into the plant. And when we process all of, all of that flow that comes to the plant, we can't hold all of that reclaim water for what it's intended for. It's intended for flushing toilets, uh, fire suppression, uh, th irrigation, things of that sort. We end up wasting it to the uh, spray field that is located out towards uh, the correction center. And then when we do have heavy users on the reclaim system, it is actually supplemented by potable water from the city source, uh, which is not always the best situation either. So we are looking to go from a 40,000 gallon tank uh, up to somewhere between a 200 and 400,000 gallon tank. And it does need to be an in-ground tank just because of the close proximity to the airport that we can't have anything that's elevated. So the design of not only the tank, but also the booster pumps that will push that water out into distribution. Uh, but it is certainly going to be needed not only now, but into the future. Uh, if Hall Equities ever get started up there, uh, that will be a project that certainly we will want to run Reclaim Water to and provide uh, that to them. But we need to make sure that we have the adequate source uh, to provide that water to them. Uh, and then some of the other things that we have going on uh, in engineering, we have started a road rating uh, program. <laughs> Finally, uh, I think it is way overdue, uh, but we have been working with uh, TIB engineers uh, with the road rating process that they use. Uh, so they have been a great resource for us uh, in determining what those parameters look like. And, and we have started on that, like I said already, we have booked all of our roads at this point, uh, lengths and widths, and what the condition or, or what the treatment is on them now. So whether it's a gravel road or a paved road, and the actual square footage of each one of those roads. So we have started down that. That is the first step that TIB suggested. So we have tried to book all of our streets at this point uh, so that we have an inventory. And they are really inventoried by block. So we have just to find individual blocks at this point to uh, rate. So that is something that will be ongoing throughout the summer uh, and most likely into the fall and winter. Um, I'm guessing that that will probably be something that we will roll out towards the first part of 2019. And also with that uh, ADA transition plan, which we have not started, and the non-motorized plan, which we both of those we plan to get started with uh, over the next few months. And the complete streets ordinance is something that is a high priority for us too. And what that is, is through TIB, that is not, it, it's an award, it's not a grant. So it's an award of uh, between 250 dollars and $500,000 uh, that can really be used for anything related to transportation, landscaping, uh, walkability, any of those aspects of complete streets. And that's really what complete, uh, complete streets ordinance is. It's a definition of how you're going to do projects in the future. And it defines uh, basically every element of what a project would look like in your city. Uh, so we have been looking at other uh, cities that have good uh, complete streets ordinances. And uh, we are trying to uh, at least 
capture some of the things that they have uh, addressed in theirs and uh, put those into our complete streets ordinance also. So that is something that we have started on and are working with the uh, Transportation Improvement Board on. Ongoing, uh, the water comp plan is still uh, moving forward, uh, expected to be done by the end of 2019. And we have run into a few roadblocks, one of which is the use of water outside of the city limits. So it's a hurdle that we have already talked about internally. Um, I know Bob has been a big help on, on trying to move through that and, and has been a good resource for that. So it is something that we continue to look at, but it's an element that they really needed to address before they could move forward with the water comp plan. Uh, so we are trying to get them that information um, and working uh, with the entire staff. Um, but like I said, Bob uh, and Kristen have also been uh, instrumental in that and in, in moving that forward and what we're actually going to do outside of the city limits in the UGA. Um, and Mark also has been involved in that. So that is an ongoing discussion. So we'll try and get them that information as soon as we can. Uh, one really good thing for us, Relight Washington is completed. Uh, that project came forward uh, quite a few months back, uh, but PUD has installed all of the LEDs uh, out there and replaced those uh, from the high pressure sodiums that were out in the field and they have completed all of their work. We have submitted uh, for reimbursement through TIB and uh, are looking to get PUD's invoice paid uh, with those grant funds and the reduction in our uh, overall utility costs to the street department uh, for the LED conversion. So happy to uh, report back that that yeah. uh, project is completed. Yeah. Is, was there a match? <coughs> or was that 100%? That was a 100% funded. Yeah, it'll be really cool to see, like a year from now, compare the utility bills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be awesome. It's great. Uh, and then uh, the also with the C Street landfill, I did provide you with the uh, work plan and also the estimated budget from Aspect Consultants. So I just wanted to go back to that. I did provide you that for uh, your viewing. That will be something that we bring back and have to address as far as funding, ongoing funding. We do have, uh, we have been talking with Department of Ecology, uh, Rebecca Lawson, the director of the toxic cleanups at uh, Department of Ecology, and she has been working diligently on finding us some more funding. Uh, but uh, if we don't, that will be certainly a discussion that we have to have internally uh, here at the city, whether we want to move forward with city funds uh, to keep that remedial investigation moving forward, uh, since we are just about out of uh, grant funds at this point uh, for that project. So that will be something that we are going to have to address here in the next uh, few months. So you will be hearing from us uh, shortly on that. And then finally, I just wanted to bring back, uh, I know quite a few months back there were uh, some a need for us to bring back a biosolids report. Uh, I think the old uh, or the former the former uh, council or commission uh, asked for it, and we have been putting those numbers together. So in 2017, uh, we brought in a total revenue of 123,465 dollars. We had a total profit margin of 39 uh, percent. And this year, to date, we have brought in just over uh, 83,000 uh, through May. So the projections are, and that was, these, these numbers are fairly conservative. We did just bring on uh, the city of Yelm, who has started bringing us biosolids. They are a fairly heavy hauler uh, to us, uh, a very large producer. It would, they're actually going to be our largest produce, producer at this point, uh, and they have only been hauling to us for about a month. Uh, so I'm guessing that these numbers are fairly conservative, but uh, overall projections look like that by the end of the year, uh, 2018 total revenue will be about $200,000. So if you look at that at the uh, 2017 profit margin, that would mean total revenue uh, or profits of just short of $80,000 after figuring in manpower, equipment, uh, power, gas, all of those things that we have to figure in as far as 
uh, the cost of doing business, um, we have done that, and it looks like, like I said, that profit margin's about 39%, so it looks like total uh, profit would be just, uh, just short of $80,000 for 2018. Is that going to be general? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Is it going to be general fund revenue? That would be sewer department revenue. Okay. okay. Yes. That's what that is the ask. sewer utility. Are you, are you going to have a little report on that as far as just documenting our, like, 2017, who were our major uh, customers? We can certainly bring that back. Um, I think we agreed when we first started doing this in late 2016 uh, that we would bring back uh, quarterly reports, so we will certainly uh, continue to do that uh, and bring those updates uh, to you. <clears throat> yeah, I think currently we have uh, 11 different uh, agencies that bring us biosolids at this point, but we can certainly provide you a list of those. Okay. Uh, can I go back to some, yes, some questions for you, Craig, if that's okay? Um, the major project you're talking about putting out for bid for the 10% design work, is that correct? Or that is correct. Okay. And then that 10% design work, that will get us to a point where we can make a construction estimate and at least know the size of the, at least fairly closely, the size of the project for future funding uh, issues, however we're going to fund it. Is that, that is correct, and that, okay. and that will get us to a point where we can apply for grants also. So it will be a grant-level design um, that will give us an engineer's estimate and a 10% design. It's really the same process that we used for uh, the downtown connector project, um, and it seemed to work fairly well. Uh, the one thing that we are going to have, and we are pushing fairly uh, hard to get this done, because we are up against the grant window of August. So uh, we are going to be working with that consultant uh, to get that uh, at least 10% design done and get us an engineer's estimate on those projects so that we can move forward with a potential uh, grant application also. The, the funds used for those RFQs, that, does that come out of the TBD? Uh, yes, it does for the transportation uh, projects, and right. all of these have been budgeted um, within the 2018 budget at this point. That was my next question. Now, this is working down the priorities list that yeah. that you presented earlier in the year, I believe. Correct. Yeah. And and as uh, Council Member uh, Schmidt stated, uh, these would be TVD funds uh, or. Uh, REIT funds that could be available to us, and both of those funds are very healthy at this point. Uh, with the million dollar uh, direct appropriation that we received for Downtown Connector Project, which we were planning on using TBD funds for, uh, those uh, funds seem to be fairly healthy at this point. So um, with the restrictions on that to use only four transportation projects, that is um, what we are planning on. Uh, spending those funds on at this point is the design and, and then moving into construction uh, or grant match. Okay. Other? So the, the margin for the um, biosolids we had talked about, well, it had been talked about at past meetings about either lowering sewer rates for people or paying the debt down faster. We will be having that discussion soon. That is the budget. Uh, right now, yeah. my head's into the general fund shortfall. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yes, that remains a common goal, I think, of everyone. Other and questions? as we continue to bring back these reports, that is certainly something if the council feels uh, that would be appropriate to have that discussion, we certainly can. Other questions for Director Gregory? I had a question for Vicki and Bob. <laughs> uh, status of the city manager recruitment. We're supposed to be hearing, I think it closes on the 18th, and we should be hearing something um, the day after that. Or Somebody's so. applied? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I had it on my calendar to give the recruiter a call just to sure. say where is it at. I've got a note in my calendar to call him tomorrow, so okay. I'll, I'll let you know. Um, yeah, I think we're within about, we're within about 10 days of yeah. it closing. Um, I'll make a point of uh, doing. Give, I'll give him, maybe I'll call him tonight and uh, have an update for you on our Thursday updates. Just curious. Yeah, I'm curious too. Any other questions we're for all, staff? We're all curious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. um, I guess our next me meeting will be Tuesday, June 19th at 7 p.m. Uh, have a motion to adjourn.
to adjourn. Uh, I second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned.